this is a revision video for kingdoms and classification and it's geared towards the leaving serpology course and remember there are five kingdoms and you're going to study each one of those and give some examples of the organisms in those classification is all about grouping living organisms so it's all about grouping life the science of classification is called taxonomy not only is it involved with grouping but it's also involved with assigning names Someone of great importance to taxonomy is Carl Linnaeus. He was a Swedish scientist, a botanist, and he's known as the father of taxonomy because he came up with, among other things, the way in which we name organisms. This is known as binomial nomenclature and it's still used to this day. So when we consider classification, we're going to imagine that each of those five kingdoms is a much branched tree. And each branch on that tree represents the great diversity of organisms in that particular kingdom. So you could just imagine all the particular plants in the plant kingdom. And the most basic unit of classification is the species. Science is always changing and in classification there has also been change. There are now three domains above those kingdoms, greatly influenced by evolutionary pathways, but not for your exams. So the first kingdom is the monera kingdom and it's very important that you can list some key features. So what do organisms have to have to fit into the monera kingdom? Well, firstly, they have to be prokaryotic and the only organisms we know that are prokaryotic are bacteria. When we say prokaryotic, we mean that these organisms do not have a true nucleus. They do not have a membrane-bound nucleus and they do not have membrane-bound organelles. They are single-celled organisms and they reproduce asexually and the method is known as binary fission. So a single bacterium can reproduce asexually, this method known as binary fission, and in effect give rise to two identical bacteria. And this can happen really quickly. In fact, we think it happens about once every 20 minutes. Next kingdom is the animal kingdom, and this kingdom contains a huge array of organisms, everything from insects to reptiles to fish to birds to humans. So once again, key features are essential. So what are the key features of the animal kingdom? Well, they are eukaryotic, they are multicellular, they reproduce by sexual reproduction and they are heterotrophic. Eukaryotic meaning the cells contain a true nucleus, meaning that the DNA is contained in a membrane bound nucleus. It also means in addition to this membrane bound nucleus that the cells have membrane bound organelles, for example, mitochondria. Sexual reproduction is another feature of the animal kingdom and sexual reproduction involves the fusion of those special cells known as gametes. Another feature of the animal kingdom is that the organisms in this kingdom cannot make their own food, therefore they are heterotrophic. The next kingdom is the plant kingdom and this too is a kingdom with great diversity. So for your exams, again, you need to know the key features. So what must an organism have to have in order to be classed as a plant? Well, they would have to be eukaryotic, they'd have to be multicellular, they would have to have cells with cell walls made of cellulose and be able to photosynthesize. They have that true nucleus. They have those cell walls made of cellulose and they're able to photosynthesize because they have chloroplasts. Also, some plants reproduce sexually and some reproduce by asexual means. So the flowering plant we know reproduces sexually producing seeds and a version of asexual reproduction was the runner shoots as in that chapter on vegetative propagation. On to the fungi kingdom then. So examples of fungi would be mold, mushrooms, and then that all-important unicellular yeast, which we've used in all of those practicals in biology. So what are the necessary key features to be placed or classified into the fungi kingdom? Fungal cells are eukaryotic. They have cell walls made of chitin. Some produce thread-like filaments called hypha. They reproduce by means of spores and are heterotrophic. Fungi are eukaryotic, meaning that their cells contain a true membrane-bound nucleus. Fungal cells also have cell walls made of this polysaccharide called chitin, which is very different to plant cell walls, which is made of a different polysaccharide known as cellulose. Some fungi can produce these thread-like filaments known as hypha, and a visible mass of these is known as a mycelium. 
Fungi can reproduce by means of spores, and this is a feature of the kingdom, but they cannot make their own food and so are heterotrophic. Next is the Protista kingdom, and once again we have to list or give an account of key features. So what features would an organism need to have in order to be classed as a protist? The Protista kingdom is unusual because there is no exact list of features. We simply know that the organisms are eukaryotic, but they're not a fungus, they're not a plant, and they're not an animal. So we use a process of elimination in classifying protists. An example of a protist or a member of the protista kingdom is the amoeba. It is a single-celled eukaryotic organism. It usually lives in fresh water. However, you can find them in soil and there are certain varieties that live in salt water. Other protists would include algae, seaweed, which is otherwise referred to as kelp. Then there are slime molds. And then finally, these tiny microscopic organisms known as diatoms that live in the ocean. So that is classification covered. Remember, it has changed, science has moved on, but for your exams, just concern yourself with knowing the five kingdoms and listing the key features of those kingdoms. Also for your exams, make sure you can give examples of the organisms in those kingdoms. Remember, these videos are not meant to replace any textbook nor your teacher's guidance. The only way to do well is to do lots of past papers and to write your own notes, wishing you the very best of luck.